Hey, good morning, race fans. It's Rob from Crotch Rocket TV, and I'm here in my garage with my little EBR 1190RS. And uh, if you've been following my posts, you know that I had some problems in the last race with the clutch. And uh, with the questions that I've been getting recently about the slipper clutch in this bike, I thought I would uh, shoot a little video of what I'm doing to check it out and then get it set up properly. So, um, as you know, this bike, uh, the EBR 1190RS, comes standard with a Suter Slipper Clutch, which is a great clutch, and it's a little bit different than the stock clutch, um, but uses a lot of the same parts. It uses the same uh, clutch pack, the uh, you know friction plates and pressure plates, and uh, or uh, clutch discs, not pressure plate. And the uh, same clutch basket, but uh, the other components are different and setting it up is a little different. So uh, let's take a look and see what we got. Okay, so I've got the clutch apart. The clutch cover is off. And uh, I've got the clutch pack out of the clutch. Uh, that's what the suitor looks like with everything taken out. Uh, this part is unique to the suitor. And so is all the internals. The clutch basket is the stock basket that comes with the 1190 or the RX, whichever one you have, the RS or the RX or SX. And the actuator is the same. So all of that is the same. Uh, the only real difference is all the internals here. So this is the clutch pack that came out. You can see there's some discoloration from heat in these rings. Now the tolerance on this is uh, 46 uh, point five or point six millimeters maximum and I've told uh, 45 point five millimeters minimum now this one measures 46 point one this old one measures 46 point one which is within spec but it's not feeling right this newer one that I have over here, it's not brand new, but it only has a few races on it, uh, measures at 46.5 millimeters. So it's close to brand new. And that's what I'm going to be replacing it with. And also the, uh, the plates and the friction discs and all that are not discolored from heat. So uh, not having a brand new one, that's my only option. I'm going to put that in and see how it works out. Now, when you're putting this in, be aware that the plates here have two sides. One side has a very sharp edge, and the other side is a rounded edge. And it's really important to get these in the proper orientation. Uh, when it goes in the bike, the sharp edge goes towards the inside of the motor and the rounded edge goes towards the outside of the motor. So uh, it's really important to get those oriented properly. You always got to remember that this plate with the little notch is the first plate to go in. And again, you just want to make sure that the sharp, sharp edge goes towards the engine and the rounded edge goes outward. And that goes there, and then we follow with a friction plate and we're just going to repeat that process until we get to the last set of plates. Okay so we're down to the last steel disc and uh, friction disc and uh, friction plate whatever you want to call it and these we're going to put in the shallow grooves up there. I don't know if you can see the difference but this this here is shallower than these over here is where we installed the rest of them. So the last one goes in these shallow grooves here. So just be aware of that. Okay, so all our plates are in. And uh, you can see there's a little lip left here, which is where the pressure plate goes. And now things get a little tricky because we got to get everything lined back up. And these are your main clutch release springs on this clutch and these grooves here have to line up with the bolt holes in the in the uh, the ring that's underneath this uh, which is part of the slipper mechanism and uh, that's get a little tricky so what I've made is this little mandrel tool out of a four or a five millimeter 
bolt that I cut the uh, head off and make a little screwdriver groove in. So I'm going to use this to uh, go through these grooves here and find a bolt hole right there. I don't know if you can see it and get this in there. Now what that's going to let me do, see this all has to be pulled out. See it falls down like this when you take it apart. So all of this has to be pulled out and the springs have to engage in this uh, ring here that, that holds everything in place. So by putting this bolt in here, see I can pull it out and make sure it's all in place when I go to put the uh, pressure plate, that part, back on. If you build one of these mandals, one thing I want to mention is that when you go to put this together, you want to line this up with these empty spots here in, in the clutch um, hub uh, because the pressure plate has these grooves on the inside which have to fit in there and it'll, it'll drop in there really nicely if, if it's right. And so if you put the bolt, the little mandrel kind of in the middle of where that groove goes like that when you go to put this together it'll be a lot easier to uh, get it all to just drop into place I don't know if I can do it with this camera in my hand but I'm gonna try and there it goes okay see so that lined up really easily and you can tell it's right because the pressure plate just seats up against the thing and now this is all in the right spot and I can pull this out. So now I'm gonna, there's been a lot of talk about these little 24 and a half millimeter bolts that wear and have to be adjusted. So this is a new one. And you can see, I hope, if it focuses, that the end is clean and there's no, there's no groove. This, is one of the ones I'm taking out and you can see the wear and you can see that there's already a little notch if I can get the light just right a little notch forming yeah there we go on the end of the bolt now if I weren't replacing the plates I think I'd probably just leave this alone because that notch is barely there and the clutch was feeling in terms of the slip was feeling okay so I'd probably leave these alone and use them a little longer but since I've replaced the plates, that means all the tolerances are going to change. So I'm going to go ahead and put new bolts in there. And one other thing, you can see that there's a shim that's gotten left behind in the uh, pressure plate here. And we want to make sure that all of these shims are, are removed so that we're starting from scratch okay so i've got the bolts in there all except the one where the mandrel is and i've made sure to tighten those in a crosshatch pattern a quarter turn at a time so that you don't bend the bolt uh, against the torque of the clutch spring and uh, now what i'm going to do i'm going to start calibrating this so i'm going to take my little tool out here and that leaves me one empty spot. And that's where we're gonna measure the clearance from the end of those bolts to the um, slipper ring uh, that activates the clutch in a reverse torque condition. Okay, so the way I'm gonna find out the depth of that hole, which is what we need to find out, is using my digital caliper here. And I'm also gonna use this little uh, eight millimeter socket as a as a shim to or a sleeve to be able to have room to measure and this is just convenient because it fits in that hole right there in the clutch as you can see it goes right in there and uh, you know it'll give me an accurate measurement so that's what I'm going to use okay so it's kind of awkward to try and do this myself with this camera so Forgive me if it looks a little weird, but okay, so here's my eight millimeter socket that I'm gonna use in my digital caliper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this. I'm gonna put this in the jaws here. 
and get a measurement of that. And then I'm going to zero it so that the caliper reads zero if it shows up. Yeah. So it reads zero with uh, that distance. Okay. So that's going to allow me to measure the depth of that hole with this part of the caliper there. Like I said, the, this goes here as a shim. I'm going to use the, uh, the gauge, the uh, caliper, then zeroed to that distance to put in there, right? And then I'm going to make sure that the caliper end, by moving this, is all the way down into, that this is up against there tightly, right? And this is tight, and then the caliper is pushed all the way down until it's up against that ring. And that should give us the total depth zeroed to the length of that socket that I'm using. Okay, so the caliper now reads 24.95 millimeters, uh, which means it's without allowing for the depth of that socket, it's 24.95 millimeters to the slipper ring uh, from the top of the clutch, the pressure plate. Okay, so the uh, caliper reads 24.94 millimeters, and the reason we have to use these bolts from Suter or some other supplier, which I've yet to find, is that they are machined exactly to 24.5 millimeters. So that allows us to know that we've got uh, 0.4 millimeters of clearance between uh, what we've measured and the end of that bolt. So uh, we want one and a half millimeters of clearance. So that tells me that by adding a one millimeter shim to underneath the head of this little bolt, that it's going to give us a clearance of 1.4 millimeters to uh, the slipper mechanism. And that's close enough. Okay, so uh, 1.4 millimeters is what we'll end up. So I'm gonna add a one millimeter shim to this bolt. Now these shims can be gotten at McMaster Carr. Uh, they're, I believe they're 10 millimeter by, uh, 10 millimeter OD by five millimeter ID. And they come as thin as a 10th of a millimeter, I believe. So I have bought an assortment of them and uh, I have some one millimeter shims. So that's what I'm gonna put in there. Bolts are in and shimmed properly, and uh, I double checked my clearance with the shim in, and we did have 1.4 millimeters, so that's pretty much where we want to be. So now all I have to do is put the uh, clutch cover back on and torque everything down, make sure the actuator works properly, and uh, give it a test. I'm not going to test ride it today because I got other work I have to do. But uh, as soon as I can, I will to make sure that it works properly. Okay, so I got um, the upper bolts snug to put the clutch cover back on. I'm not going to put the lower bolts in yet because I have to put my uh, engine saver on that uh, Taylor Made Racing so generously provides for me. I highly recommend these. You can see my name on this one. <laughs> um, and uh, once that's in place, I can't get the uh, conical nut in. So I'm going to do that first. And there's a special tool for this, but I find that a 17 millimeter slightly offset box end wrench and a uh, five millimeter hex works just fine. So that's what I'm going to use to tighten this like that. Okie dokie, there it is, all back together and uh, with the bolts in there. One word of caution, uh, be careful not to over torque these bolts. Make sure you know the torque setting. I think it's, off the top of my head, I think it's 80 pounds, 80 inch pounds. So uh, don't over torque them, double check that and because uh, it's easy to strip those things. So 
Yeah, that's it. I'll test drive it a little later. I checked the clutch pull and it feels feels better. So I'm hoping that just taking it apart, putting new uh, clutch back in there, um, kind of reseated everything and got everything adjusted right. So we'll see how it feels. I won't be able to test the slip until I get on the track because just taking around the block on the street here, I you know can't get enough juice going to really check it out. So, um, but I will be test riding it later once I get everything. Okay, it's Rob from Crotch Rocket TV. I uh, hope this was helpful. Good luck with your EBR 1190 RS slipper clutch.